This is the Lumia 925, and as the name implies, it's pretty much a refresh of the Lumia 920 that I have over here. So it's sort of like a midlife refresh, and the goal of the 925 was to address some of the issues that were faced on the Lumia 920. So let's have a look at the box. Here it is. As you can see, the difference between the 925 and the 920 is quite massive, really. So one of the biggest complaints with the 920 was that it weighed 185 grams, which was quite hefty for this size of device. Uh, do keep in mind this has a 4.5 inch display. And well, Nokia addressed this complaint with the 925 and they made it weigh 139 grams for packing pretty much almost the exact same specs. The waistline went down from 10.7 millimeters down to about 8.5 millimeters. The 925 also featured one of the best Lumia designs, combining a very elegant aluminum frame that curves perfectly to fit into your hand and a matte polycarbonate finish on the back, which has a very pleasant soft touch and offers durability unmatched by glass. It also allowed Nokia to create a nice solution to the camera bump. So as you can see, the plastic curves upwards to sort of cover the camera bump. It looks quite nice. Something that we actually see on newer devices with plastic bags from Nokia to a slightly lower degree. I think this is one of the most svelte and elegant Nokia designs on a Lumia. The other cool aspect about the back finish is that it also integrated these pins you see over here, which Nokia used to add functionality like wireless charging back to the device through this case that they've built specifically for the 925, which added wireless charging as well as acted as a protective case. As for the display, while the size hasn't changed from 4.5 inches and the resolution stayed the same at 768p, the 925 utilized an AMOLED display as opposed to the IPS LCD one found on the 920, which I think works much better with the colorful Windows Phone platform with its black backgrounds. Another cool aspect of the 925 is the camera. So it was the second device to feature optical image stabilization after the feature debuted on the 920. But Nokia also made the first six lens element for this camera, which helped improve image sharpness compared to the 920. The 925 was also a class leader when it comes to low light images thanks to optical image stabilization and it also captured better, more stabilized video thanks to this feature too. This was before software stabilization was quite common amongst phones. Nokia also added very cool additional features to the camera such as smart cam, later integrated into Lumia camera here, which gave you the ability to capture moving objects creating a very cool duplication effect. You could also add blur to the background in action shots as well as the ability to remove subjects from the background that might be ruining your picture. Sadly though, the Lumia 925 wasn't perfect, so here are some of the issues that were relevant for its time. For a start, the storage space went from 32 gigabytes on the Lumia 920 down to 16 gigabytes with no option to add any external memory. As mentioned earlier, the wireless charging was removed and added through a case which isn't as convenient as having it built in. And finally, due to Microsoft's obsession over Windows Phone hardware compatibility, the 925 came out with the exact same chipset as the Lumia 920, which was the Snapdragon S4 Plus. So this was considered outdated by the time that the 925 came out, even if the performance of the 925 was just as good as many flagships, if not a bit better at the time. And this made it hard to justify paying a flagship price for a device with such specs, even if it was a beautiful one. 
Anyway, for me, the Lumia 925 definitely pushed the needle for hardware design back in 2013 and was definitely an evolution of the Fabula design that started on the Nokia N9. This design was certainly the source of inspiration for many flagship competitors that came after that. I think the most notable one is the iPhone 6, especially if you look at the side profile. And despite its shortcomings, I just loved using it due to how nice the hardware was, because for me, as I've mentioned many times, hardware is absolute king. And when a device looks this good and feels this nice in the hand, I'm a lot more tolerant to some of the hardware shortcomings. And this for me was why the Lumia 925 continues to be a very memorable device. Anyways, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.